Hey guys, I am the Tong Man. So what does it mean to have a chipped ECU? Or what is a chipped ECU? Basically what it is is this. This is a computer chip that stores a tune for your car. So what that means is that you have your tune flashed onto this chip and then this chip is then socketed into your ECU which controls everything about your car regarding fuel, ignition, timing, uh, to all your electronics. The purpose of having a custom chip for your car is to maximize your performance modifications so that you can get the most out of your car performance wise. I'm doing a video today to uh, show you guys how to chip your ECU, your computer for your older Hondas, uh, mostly for uh, D series and uh, B series motors. Um, I have a D16 Y7, Y8 mini me right here and I'm gonna try to chip my ECU to uh, uh, get more power out of the mods that I have. Basically what a chip is, is that uh, you put a chip, a programmable chip into your ECU so that um, you can modify timing and uh, retard timing and do a whole bunch of ignition stuff. So I'm out here with uh, a buddy of mine who's gonna do my chip. Basically what you need is a OBD1 ECU like this one that I have here. The most popular ECU for the uh, older Hondas, like the B series and D series, is the P28 ECU. So uh, basically, you're gonna open this case up and then put a little chip, or you're gonna solder a chip onto the board. So my mods are a stock Y7 bottom end with a Y8 head. So it's got the VTEC head. It's a single overhead cam VTEC. Uh, performance mods are the AM intake, a uh, race header, and a catback. So, um, and it's got a uh, NOS system set up as well. So we're gonna do the chip and uh, see if there's any uh, performance difference afterwards. All right, so let's see. Let's see what this one is. <clears throat> yeah, so okay, so this was actually a stock one. If you look at this 11FO, this is a, a new version, a revision. Uh, the old one is a 1720. And then uh, if this was a automatic, you would have uh, solenoids right here. But because it's not, then um, it's missing. Uh, and then with the P28, you need these two to control VTEC. Uh, to chip this, right, you'd have to do whatever's inside this dash right here. So you have your jumper to run uh, external memory. And then uh, you have your resistor, your um, 27256 chip here uh, that stores your uh, Honda bra. And then you need the uh, octo tri-state buffer to latch the data in before it sends it to the ECU. Okay. But you know, like this one is pretty much a version, a virgin. Yeah, so that's what they mean by when they say virgin ECU means it hasn't, hasn't been, been touched. touched yeah. Hasn't been touched. So, I mean, if you look at the other one, the other one's, you know, modified already. This one's already been all prepped and done. So, like I was saying, you know, you have your capacitors. Uh, they're here for noise filtering. Your resistor, your jumper. To jump the ECU to tell it to run externally, so it's gonna run off this ROM here. But anything that comes here has to go through the Octo Tri-State buffer, it latches data in. And if you want to take a step further for data logging, then you want your CN2 port established here. Is that what uh, Honda uses? The yeah. S Honda uses communication from here, uh, TTL to um, I think TTL Logic, and then you'd have to cut J12 for a full. Um, uh, by directional data transmission. Okay, so both of these are P28 ECUs. These are both P28 identical. Yeah. Why is the P28 so popular? 
uh, with the just Honda. a general ECU, man. You yeah. could put any motor, any any B Honda series, D series, H series, F series, more along the lines of the F uh, for the um, Prelude. Yeah. But yeah, this ECU is universal. Yeah, that's why uh, it's so popular. Yeah. Now, if you want something that can control um, a knock, then you probably go with the P30 ECU, which has a knock board. What's the P30 from? Uh, you know, from the Delso. Oh, the Honda Delso. Yeah, Honda Delso. Okay. Um, and then also, I think the newer Civic might have that, but then it would be from the JDM one. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, the difference between these two are just this this part here. Yeah. And well, you have this part, right? This guy here, this capacitor, that capacitor, this resistor, this jumper. Okay. So there's the virgin, and then here is what's socketed one already. Yeah, one's socketed. already prepped. All right. Yep. Cool. Uh, the, what does the chip look like? The chip is a standard. I mean, it used to be um, Atmel used to make them, but Atmel stopped making them. So what happened was um, SST started making them, but uh, they're a little bit different. Uh, let me see if I can find one for you here. Well, here's the old ones here that I used to have. These are Atmel. These are very popular way back when, but these are uh, no longer produced. So the new ones you have now is actually the SST. Uh, this one only holds 256. SST holds 512. So on the 512, um, you can actually run dual mode, two chips in there. I mean, two two uh, maps in there. Oh, so you can switch between. So yeah, you, you can switch. Uh, but then you know, for the purpose of just running one map, then you just gotta make sure that when you burn it, you have the offset in there. Okay. Uh, so the SST will look just like this one, but labeled differently. It does the same thing. So that's just a, a smaller memory compared to the this. One yeah, half the size, okay. half the size. Right. Cool. So um, how do, how do you program the programming is tune actually onto the chip? Program is not hard. Uh, I don't think I have it up and running though. We we'll have to load this up. Um, I use a programmer that I make. Uh, and you can probably get that from TunerLabs.com or, or take it back TunerWizard.com, but uh, programmer is just very basic you know you're just gonna save your uh, bin file and then load into the programmer and then just hit the program button and then what that will do is it'll send a, a 12 volt signal to erase the flash memory chip and then it'll reprogram it with the new uh, bin file okay. and that chip you could uh, reuse it over and over reflashable and, okay. it's reflashable of course there's limitation I think it's up to like a thousand times or something like that okay okay so basically for your setup I'm assuming you want something from Chrome, right? Yeah. Now I've done a lot of Chrome uh, dyno tuning when I used to have a dyno. So usually what I do is I usually base it off something that I have already that's known to work. Mm -hmm. um, and then usually I go from there. And Chrome is a free tuning program. Chrome is a free platform for you to burn and um, read from the chip. Now if you want more um, you know, bells and whistles, if you want to be able to data log and real, uh, do real time upload, then you probably want to shoot for the Pro, pro version. Okay, so there's a free and there's a pro. There's a free, a pro, and a tuner. Which one are you going to be using? Uh, this one here, I think, on this laptop only has a pro version, I think. Okay. How much to get a pro version of a pro? Pro version is, I believe, about 150 And anybody could get it? You get, a can get it. Yep, okay. can get it. Okay, so here's a standard one uh, that was for D16Y8. Um, I usually just go through and do the basics. It's just a normal routine for me now. Um, so usually what I do is, you know, on, on this map, I'd go through and remove checks and routine so you don't get that error. I go through and add in a um, quick data logger and RPT just so that the capability is there if I need to do some uh, data logging off this uh, binary map file. Um, and then after that, it's just, you know, depends on what the user needs. I mean, this one's already. This map is tuned for a D16Y8, so okay, it'll so run. What I have is a mini me. Is it different? It is slightly different, yeah. but for a base map, it's never going to be perfect. That's why it's called a base map. Yeah. So the idea of the base map is just to make sure you're it, uh, it'll get you up and running, mm -hmm. uh, relatively safe. Okay. So, I mean, this is a base map, and we could do this just regular parameter changes if you want to up the RPM or you know fiddle with Atari Idol or their, or their uh, VTEC, but ultimately you'd need a Dynatune to actually, you know, yeah, sort to all that out. Yeah, to get the most out of it, right? Yep. Okay.